A differential equation. I was about to stay here. That can be written. You're trying to get me off track, aren't you? No, what, Mr. Me? Can be written as stop. Capital M of X plus capital N of Y dy dx equals zero. Okay, this is important where capital M is a function of x only and n is a function of y only. So if you have a differential equation that has some function of x and then another function of y only equals 0, such differential <laughs> equations can be solved using separation of variables. Oh. Whoa. What? It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. There it is. Separation of variables. Gabe, were you down to get a file on the AP test? I don't think I'm done. Hey, yeah, like, Gabe, do me a solid and get a file on the AP I'm not going to do this for any of you. <laughs> I refuse. For example, I'm gonna stick it to the man. Get it zero. First zero ever. Uh, X squared sh 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 plus three Y. Y prime equals zero. Is that also three Y? Yeah. Hey, sh 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 sh. gotta focus here, you guys. This right here could be thinking of or could be thought of as a function of x. This 3y could be thought of as a function of y. And here y prime, that's just dy dx. You guys following? So it's of the form we have a function of x plus a function of y dy dx, and it's equal to 0. So what we would have done last time, I know it's been a long weekend, but you don't want to integrate if you have x's and y's on the same side of the integral or inside of one integral. So what, what do you remember we did last time? <coughs> we, uh, we were like doing identity things where you're like proving and verifying. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. So that two times two we separated. We moved uh, oh, yeah. right. the y terms on one side and the x terms on the other side. Actually. Yeah, so it's kind of like the implicit stuff. Yeah. So if it is, shh, 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 Gabe, if it is of this form, you collect the x terms on one side, you collect the y terms on one side. And then you can integrate. Okay. 
Or this one. X Y prime over E to the Y plus one equals two. Before you could uh, before you could integrate this, you'd have to do a little tiny bit of a rewrite. What would the rewrite look like before you wanted to integrate? We, we could. Or we could cross multiply. Brilliant. <laughs> we want to keep all the y terms on one side, all the x terms on the other side. So we probably ought to keep these y terms together, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can divide it by y prime over e y plus one. <laughs> or, or we could just divide by x. Yeah, that's right? Yeah, we can do that. He has gone. We could write this as dy over e to the y plus 1 equals 2 over x dx squared. Notice, notice I'm changing the y primes and dy dx's. Because you got to yeah. separate the dy from the dx. What is, what is a dx? Well, you're not down to do that game? Dx. I'm going to do it. D. I think yeah, it would be spot. <laughs> it would be like taking a strong yeah. memory and making it. Think of all the funny conversations we would hear. Find the general our alliteration battle solution probably like season two it's called the alliteration assault <laughs> x squared plus four dy dx <laughs> equals x y <laughs> let's go x squared plus 4 dy dx equals xy. Now you can't just jump straight into integration. You've got to rewrite by separating variables. This is going to be a separation of variables problem. So all the y's and dy's need to be on one side. All the x's and dx's need to be on the other side. So first step is to rewrite. I wouldn't bother distributing the dy dx, so just leave the parenthesis alone, the x squared plus 4. Okay. You could, you could divide by x. There's a lot of ways. There's probably a few ways you could do this, and you should end up at the same spot. If you multiply it by dx, Okay. That's going to move the dx over here. Then you can divide by y over here. And then you could divide by x squared plus 4 over here. You guys following what I'm doing here? Yeah. So what, I know it's kind of messy, but what are we going to end up with on the left side? Dy over y. Dy over y. And then over here x dx over x squared plus 4. So that was just moving things to other sides of equations. That's just basic algebra. Now that we've separated variables, we can integrate. Oh, 
Yo, you guys have like the attention span of a three-year-old. Come on. What's the integral of dy over y? You should know this. Natural log of the absolute value of y. <laughs> well, then this one's just going to be two times. We one need to half multiply half. it by a two here. This needs to be multiplied by a one half out there. You guys follow it? Yeah. And this is just going to be one half times the natural log of x squared plus 4. And that doesn't need to be an absolute value because x squared plus 4 is always positive. Except it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. And then there's a plus C. Okay. Now, this one half in front of the logarithm is bothering me a bit. So let's, move. let's square root the thing yeah. right here. You can move it up as an exponent, and then a power of one half is really just a root. Correct? Yeah. So I'm going to do another rewrite. Natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to natural log square root of x squared plus 4 plus c. Flip back to the last section of notes. Go back to 6.2 real quick. Very quick. One of the last examples we did, if not the last example, do you remember what happened when we ended up with a natural log of something? Check out one of those examples. Come on, it's in there. Look in 6.2. What's that? You guys listening? Still not with me. For some reason, you think what you guys have to talk about is more important. It's not. It's not. How do we get things outside of a natural law? Mm. Let me use a base of E. Oh my goodness. But you guys, look carefully, please. Look carefully, please. You can only use one base of E here and one base of E here. You can't also use a separate base of E for that. Just disregard it. So this whole thing right here. Base E. You following? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That doesn't make it look, I mean, any less complicated, though. Yeah, this becomes Y equals square root of X squared. Well, this is, this is just... A Something property of exponents, you guys. If you have, uh, let me give you a new screen here. Okay. If you're multiplying two things together that have the same base, what do you do? Uh, so wouldn't this, aren't these the same thing? Okay, so I want you to look carefully at what you guys are trying to do. You have e to the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 4 plus c. Look at this property that you guys already know. Whoa. How could we apply this property? We could apply it. We could separate it out so it's E L L X squared plus 4 times. times E to the C. Multiplied by E to the C. There you go. You guys following? Yeah, I guess. If they have the same base and you're multiplying, wouldn't you add the exponents? Yeah. Yes. And that's what we're doing here is adding the exponents. So here we have just the absolute value of y. Over here we have e to the c times the square root of x squared plus 4. Put that on there. Now, this absolute value right here around y, that means that y could be positive or negative. But when you take the absolute value of it, it would come out as a positive. Say what?
Okay. So you're adding two exponents here. So we separate that into the same base with just these two separate exponents. So here you're adding this plus that. Yeah, but e to the natural log cancel. Hey, Mr. Huff, would you be down to host a marathon party of your videos? Oh, <laughs> Probably not. A what? No. Probably not. What is a like, what? Like, all the words. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just about there, you guys. This takes a lot longer than it needs to quite often because of all the shh, shh, shh. Okay, not quite. What is E? It's a constant. And what is C? Another constant, right? So you can replace this whole thing with just C because it represents a constant. So that's the general solution. Wait, what? E to the C is just a constant, right? Oh my goodness. Oh my god. And then if you really want to do it, take that do y over C. Do y over C. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. That's insane. X, Y, D, X. Plus E to the negative X squared. Y squared minus 1. D, Y equals 0. Okay, let's, let's, are we going to solve this on our own? Try it. <laughs> Try it. What'd you guys try? We just, remember we just put a negative on it from the outside? So you move this over here. Okay, so you have e to the negative x squared, y squared minus 1 dy equals negative x, y, dx. Okay, keep going. Okay, so you've got y squared minus 1, dy over y. No, you had So we have y terms on one side, and we have x terms on the other side. Yeah. Which, where'd you go from there? Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Um, okay, shh, 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 shh. You guys, I want you to consider something here. This right side. Ooh, that's an ugly integral. This right side here. Is this a pretty straightforward integral? Yeah. Uh, I What do you guys think?
this here. Okay, guys, if this y squared plus or minus 1 weren't there, wouldn't this be a pretty straightforward integral? Yeah, that would. The, uh, the y squared minus 1 is making this a bit trickier. Would you agree? I would agree with that. Okay, so check this out. You guys ready? I'm ready. I've, I've shown you this trick a few times. Um, what just happened there? Did you guys see what happened here? What's y squared divided by y? Y, and then what's 1 over y? Uh, is that haven't I shown you this trick a few times? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where is the y that's supposed to be under the dy though? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, no, you just said y squared minus 1 over y times dy. Yeah. And then uh, Jessica, I think, brought up a good point regarding the negative exponent, right? Let's just move this up. And give it a positive exponent. You guys are out of that? Ooh, more Didn't even think of that. That is where it's at. I feel like such a thing. I'm missing something. Oh, the dx. There's the dx. So it's e to the x squared times negative x. Dx. E to the x. What does that mean? Now let's integrate both sides. You guys, all you've got is the sum or difference of multiple terms here. So integrate each term separately. What's the integral of y? That's the derivative. What's the integral? Y squared over 2. Okay. And then this... 1 over y dy, isn't that the natural log of y? 1 over y dy, you guys following? Yeah. Okay, and then over here on the right side. We need to do a u substitution here. So, if we let u equal x squared, then what's du? 2x dx. We've got, actually I'm going to move that minus sign out front. So we've got that minus sign out front. We've got the x dx that we need. What are we missing? So we need a 2 right there, and we need a 1 half out there. So it's negative 1 half. And then what, what, what's the integral of e to the u? E to the u. So it's just e to the x squared. That's the answer? Well, plus c. You can't simplify it anymore? Technically, yeah, but then when you combine the plus c, it's just another constant. Well, there's a part B. Now, find the particular solution. Given that initial condition. Okay. So, yes, yeah, this right here that I'm pointing at, is this an x value or a y value? This right here, the zero. That's an x value. This right here, that's a y value. So this is x, that's y. So all you got to do is plug them in. Negative 
So if you plug in a 1 for y, you've got 1 half. And then the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. 0, that's right. Equals. And here x is zero, so e to the zero power. That number's pretty big. Oh. Is one. One times negative one half is negative one half. Plus c. Plus c. So is that we're trying to find one. c. We're trying to find c. Yeah. C equals one. So if you add a half to the other side, that gives you two halves. <laughs> Which is one. So, the particular solution is y squared over 2 minus the natural log of y equals negative 1 half e to the x squared plus 1. That would be the particular solution. And that's correct. And I'm the ace by the point. Where's the actual one? I think that's about it. That's amazing. Well, application. Write this down. The rate of change. Of the number of coyotes. <laughs> coyotes. <laughs> is directly proportional <laughs> to 650 minus N T where T is time what do you mean by the rate of change, like, <coughs> to the birth rates? The number of the population. Uh, when t equals zero, population is 300. This is the initial value. When t equals two, Population is 500. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. Okay. Then, in two years, they had <laughs> Find the population <laughs> when t equals 3. What does uh, what does this stand for, Eddie? A derivative. N of t. <laughs> number of coyotes. That's just the number of coyotes. That's a function, right? But the very first statement is the rate of change of the number of coyotes. How would you write that? The rate of change. N not t. Or n dash n. Isn't that a derivative? Then prime. Let's write Let's write that as dn dt. The rate of change is dn dt or n prime. But I'm going to call it dn dt because we're going to have to move the dt over eventually to integrate. Now, you've seen this, or I've, I've told you about this before. The rate of change is directly proportional. There's two types of proportionality, indirect or direct. So this would be k times this value right here, 650 minus, this is the constant 
Yeah, like hoops slow. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> From your so physics class? So yeah. 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 Okay, you guys understand what's happening here? What if this set said indirect or inversely proportional? BK over 650 minus N. Now just remember, K is a constant. It's just like a big fat C. It's just the same thing, but for proportionality problems, I always use the letter K. I don't know why. Uh, Okay, we've got to find we've got to find n of t and then plug in a three to that. That's our that's the point of this problem. We've got to find out what n of t is and then we can plug in a three into that. That'll give us the population. So, isn't this just n prime? Yeah. How do you find n if you know n prime? Like the integral. You integrate, but the problem is you first have to move dt over here. And that caboozles us. There's still a bit of a problem. You guys need to look carefully here. Look at the screen. We're taking the integral with respect to time here, but this is n. And over here we have dn. So this needs to move. This 650 minus n. Oh, n. Well, n is a function of time. So I'm just going to call it n. n just represents a function of t. So we got to divide that over. We've got to move the 650 over here so we can collect or separate the variables. Isn't that what we're talking about in this section? Yeah. So it's going to be dn divided by 6, what is it, 605, 650? So where we got k dt, that's it, all the time? Equals k dt. K is constant. All right, now we can integrate both sides. The uh, integral of K dt is K t plus C. K t plus C. Okay. Well, you can just pull the k out because it's a constant. And the integral of dt is t. So it's k. kt plus c. Really close. We need a negative here and then a negative here. Because if you did u substitution, u is u is negative n, or u is 650 minus n, the derivative would be. Oh, sick. Got it. Yeah. So this is going to be negative natural log of 650 minus n. Okay. I'm going to move the minus sign. I'm going to move the minus sign from the natural log over to the kt. Just to by divided by a negative sign. C is just a constant, so a negative constant is the same as a positive constant. Now, how do we get uh, how do we get the ln? How do we get rid of it? Raise it to p. Yeah. Technically, yeah, but plus or minus a constant is the same thing. Now remember, you guys, this is the same trick, I guess, as last time. You're, all, you're raising this whole entire thing to a power of 
where the base is this whole exponent. You guys follow? Yes. So over here we have 650 minus n equals e to the c times e to the negative kt. But exactly, remember e to the c, what can we replace that with? That's just another constant c. So how would you pronounce that? Kicked? Yeah, I guess. It looks exactly like per. And then if you subtract the 650 over. Oh my god! The obsession of Pert must stop. I know. <laughs> no, it does. You we even did a C E K T. We no longer need it because it's no longer a natural log. We only this needed the absolute value because the natural log was there. But the E canceled the natural log. How do you remember to people so uncomfortable? We're almost there. <laughs> divide by negative. So N, or the number of coyotes, is equal to 650 minus C E to the negative KT. Yep. Now, you guys, the point of the problem is to figure out how many coyotes there are at year three, at t equals three. I can plug in a three right here, but what's the other problem? We don't know C, we don't know... Okay, well, they've given us two initial conditions. They've given us... When t equals zero, hold on, hold on. When t equals zero, didn't n equal 200? And when t is equal to two, n was equal to 300. We'll have to finish this up next time, but using the initial conditions, we can solve for c and k. Oh.